Hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Leipzig career mode. Nagelsmann who? What? No, he's not here. It's me. I have taken over. You have taken over this squad, and we have improved it by a lot, guys. We are currently at transfer deadline day. Yes, we still have some money to spend if we wanted to. We still have how much? Over 100 million due to the release clause of Danny Olmo being paid. We were actually enabled to change our formation, have Soboslai on the left, Isak Mambimbi up top, Oriano on the right wing now in the starting lineup. Finally, he has made his way into it. Part of this in here and Suchek as well. Part of this and Oriano, both I think Argentinian should, should be very good buddies within our squad. Let's see if Mambimbi and Oriano's friendship is going to be hindered by Paredes now becoming a third wheel in there. I don't know what's going to happen there, boys. But anyways, the defense is looking strong. Konate has joined in into the squad as well and is now playing better. I appreciate his performances. Denier has been quality as Gulashi has shown to be a beast of a goalkeeper. And our reserves team has been building up very, very nicely. The actual Leipzig transfer, Robby has joined into the team but there's a comment here from Mohamed Khan who says fun fact yesterday Brobby took a penalty for Ajax which ended out of the stadium oh well he is a strong lad but maybe the accuracy is missing anyways I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this epi if you do make sure to hit that like button subscribe down below if you are new and uh let's see what we can achieve today hopefully some big moves and maybe potentially one last transfer on transfer deadline day i don't know let's see how that goes but thank you guys so much for tuning in let's have some fun <laughs> look at that 147 million richarlison moves from everton to villarreal and from villarreal for 147 million to liverpool that has to be one of the maddest transfers i've ever seen I think every single Liverpool fan absolutely hates Richarlison because he is very, very much pro Everton and he is just put it, sticking it in every time and he's like, ah, yeah, we're better. We, we won this game. We did this. We did that. And he, he likes to post memes and stuff and that get people infuriated. Hey, he gets people talking about him. That's what he's doing. So congratulations to him. But hey, I don't like him. I, I, I do like him as a football player, but I don't like him, you know? But we're going to go into fan objectives because we have a couple of new ones. We have two new fan objectives, guys. It is now completed. Red Bull Rage, we're still uh, yet to play against Bayern Munich. History books, Mambimbi hopefully will be in the top three of the, um, what's it called, of the uh, top scorers in the in the Bundesliga. That is obviously a goal that we have set ourselves. Uh, placeholders only is a new objective. Get 30 goal contributions with Oreano and Soboslai. They will have to prove that they are better than the lads that have left the team in the name of Zabica and Olmo. Soboslai and Oreano now taking over those starting lineup spots in our team. Hence why that objective has come in. Thank you, Salvatore, for the suggestion. Isak's revenge is still on zero because we haven't played against Dortmund yet. You have been denied. He's still only on one after three Bundesliga games only one clean sheet for us and looking for options is a beautiful name um that came up from Gavin it is an objective in which I have to get 10 no sorry five assists with um with Lookman and uh, he plays as a cam in the reserves team so we'll see how he does there hopefully he can perform hopefully he does well and by the way the sprint of glory that I've been promising you guys for like two weeks is hopefully gonna come out tomorrow I'm so sorry I don't necessarily know if we're gonna make any transfers on transfer deadline day but maybe we will I'm not too sure but I'm looking at the squad I don't really necessarily see any weaknesses in our team at the moment and if anything it would have to be a massive transfer to kind of impact the squad. It would have to be someone to be taken out of the starting lineup. And I'm looking at this starting lineup and I'm just thinking, I don't want to change anything. I really, really don't. I enjoy every single player in the starting lineup for the for the first team. And when we look at the reserves team, I I don't know. I, I don't think anyone should be leaving this reserves team. That is my honest opinion. So even though we have 100 million to spend, I have absolutely no desire to go ahead and buy someone. And I think sometimes you just have to stick with what you have and be happy with it. And until January, there's plenty of time and about six months in game time, we can go ahead and make a decision. If we don't like a specific player, a player that hasn't performed, we can definitely go out there and sell them. But we get a loan offer for Kraus, a CDM slash centre-back, 21 years old. 
Um, uh, I, I guess I'll accept it. I'll just go with a regular loan, though. No buy option, even though... What's the point in keeping him around? It doesn't really make sense what I'm doing here. A loan deal has been accepted for Kraus now. And we do get a loan off or swap deal offer from Leicester for Gulashi. Dennis Pret plus 14 mil. How about... Uh, no. Over a billion has been spent in this transfer window. Over a billion, man. That's a bit insane, isn't it? So you can take a look at it here. The challenge on 147. Alfonso Davies has left Bayern Munich on transfer deadline day for 138 million to Barcelona. That actually goes into our favor. Alfonso Davies is an incredibly good left back, uh, one of the highest potentials, if not the highest potential left back in the game. Then we have Isak coming into our squad. Upamecano had joined Napoli now for 111 million. The former Leipzig center back is being reached around over to the Italian side. Nabri has joined an Italian side as well for over 103 million. Bayern is selling everyone. Who did they buy? That's what I'm asking myself. Did they buy anyone? Because Sule is also not at Bayern Munich. He's at Barcelona now, was at Chelsea before. I do wonder what Bayern has done with all that money that they got. They also sold Varane to Liverpool. Who does Bayern have? They got themselves Gomez for 71 mil. Anyone else? Bayern Munich on a sale. I honestly, I don't understand what's going on here. I'm extremely surprised. Maybe I can just sort by club and that way we will be able to see Bayern only. Maybe we will. We definitely won't. Well, I tried. Well, for our club only, the transfer window has been a bit mad anyways. Look at this, man. Villagra Goebbels loaned. Carvajal came in. Roger has left. Mvogo has gone. Escayo has left. Katabach has joined, joined in. Broby has joined in. Campbell has left our squad. Alessane Player was immediately sold because he's just not good enough. Raskin has taken over his position in reserves team. Alderweireld for 22 million. 28 million for Tomiyasu there. Uh, Christensen leaving for 60 to Juventus. 65 for Iñaki. 77 then paid for Konate. Suchek 88. Savica 88. It's a bit of a madness, man. 67 million for Orellano. 100 million for Olmo, 80 plus Alcacer for Isak. My God, what's the total that we actually spent? In total, we have actually spent over 400 million in this transfer window. 400 million. 400 million, is that how many individual hairs it takes to make up that glorious mustachio? That's insane. I don't think I've ever spent that much money in any of our career modes so far. 400. That's so crazy. That's such a crazy number, man. 400. I can't believe that. I genuinely can't believe that. That is, wow. That's special. We have Bundesliga games coming up now, guys. We got to focus. Also, actually, one thing that people were saying that I never looked into is the Youth Academy. I never checked Leipzig's Youth Academy, did I? Do we have anyone special in here? Oh, not necessarily. None of these guys are special. Well, thank God I didn't check it out because all these guys are actually horrible. I'm now even more disappointed. I thought Leipzig had a really good youth academy in real life, but in here, it definitely, definitely sucks. Hoffenheim coming up next in the Bundesliga. This game, I will go ahead and play with this squad. The main squad is going to match up against Hoffenheim, who are currently 13th. After that, guys, we have Champions League football coming up, which I'm excited about. We have Dinamo Kiev, Napoli, and Marseille in our group. Those are the matchups that we have for the future but let's get started with some of this some of these matches man we, we definitely need to get through some games i uh, want to see who is going to be the player that i want to sell in january i want to know who is not going to be good enough who is going to underperform from all these players that we have in the main team and the reserves team now the main team is going to play this game and the reserves is going to be up in the champions league debut matchup yes against dinamo we'll see how they do but here it goes. Leipzig against, against Hoffenheim. We need to basically probably win every single game we can win. It's a 2-1 victory. Bambimbi keeps on scoring. Paredes gets the most important one to make it 2-1. The Argentinian midfielder is such a good box-to-box -box player. I loved him back in like FIFA 17 or something when he was at AS Roma. I really liked him. By the way, Biscuit, buddy, hey, listen to me. Please don't play this music because it gets us copyright stricken. So... Just show my face. It's all good. Yeah, 
that's that's fine thanks i have one clear goal for this season and that is to win the champions league i honestly do believe that by the time we get to the champions league final this team will have a bunch of 88 rated players a bunch of maybe possibly even 90 rated players and at that stage i need to win it it could be the final season of the culture glory i really really do want to get it done and the ultimate goal as you guys do know is to go ahead and win the champions league that is the big goal that we have set ourselves when we started uh, in our first squad. So let's step it up against Dinamo Kiev. Now, I could be simming this, but I won't. I want to step into the game with the reserves myself and start playing the Champions League myself. Our debut matchup is going to be played. Actually, the main team is fit enough, but after that, we have Leverkusen coming up, which is a big matchup. So I'm going to start with the reserves and then we'll see if we have to sub in some of the big boys to try and get things done because. I'm not necessarily scared of Dinamo. They have a couple of okay players, especially Tsigankov on that right-hand side could be interesting, or Shaparenko as well. But uh, I think this team should be able to handle this level of opponents. Dinamo might be looking at our team and thinking, all right, they're not taking us serious. Let's show them what we're about. And I'm going to show you what I'm about, what Robbie is about. This kid in his first game already did extremely well. And I'm really hoping he can continue that type of performance for us. Also, I'm surprised that he actually accepted the deal with Leipzig and still played for Ajax yesterday. As you guys have said, the fact that he got to take that penalty, I find quite interesting. Go on, Robbie. Straight away. Show me that strength. Oh, yes. One of them is taking the defenders away. Robbie. He has good shot power on him. I wanted to test it out. I wish long shots were actually a thing in this game. Here we go. That's Orban. Orban. Oh, we jumped up above three defenders. I absolutely love that. Let's try that again, Orban. It's all you and me, pal. It's all you and me, Orban. There he is. Oh, he's good in the air. Very good. I like it. He's the captain of the reserves, by the way. Robbie. That is Lookman. No skills on him by the looks of things. Robbie, go on. Is that a good pass? It is a good pass. It's offside. He was just inches offside, I believe. Quite unfortunate for Robbie. Could have scored his first Champions League goal for Leipzig. Great ball. Tomiyasu has that recovery pace and he's going to use it to his advantage. Lovely. And now we get the ball back. Adams playing it forward. Hang Hee Chan. Terrible pass. I'll take it though. Another good pass this time around. There he goes. Oh, come on. Nice steal. Raskin, play it forward, please. Thank you. Hang Hee Chan with that diagonal. Hang Hee Chan. Now he's through. He has his teammate next to his side. Let's go, Robbie, right before half time, the lead in the Champions League. Dinamo is down and Robbie is up for it, boys. Beautifully played in between the two strikers. We do have two great partnerships, man. Especially this one is very well balanced as well, just like the other one. We have one taller, stronger striker and one speedster getting in behind. And that's the same with Isak and Mambimbi, but at the same time, Isak has a turbo in himself, so uh, we can't judge him too much. But man, that's a great goal from Brubbery. Uh He runs through and gets it. The, the numbers I need to change though. Number 10 doesn't really fit on a striker like that. Good ball. Wang Hee Chan once again. Brobby, incredible through ball. And that should be 2-0. The boys are such a good pair. Man, these guys are playing so well together. 2-0, Leipzig takes one more goal. And with that, boys, we are going to sim this game until the end because I don't see a way for Dinamo to come back into this. I'm going to make my changes and I'm going to sim it to the end. So we're going to bring on the likes of, I don't know, we can bring on Parades, who gets a plus three at cam, so we can put him in there. Put Suchek into the game as well. Gets Get a little bit of defensive stability. I think that's what I'm looking for here. And then bring on Mukiele for Pavar, who seems tired. That's the way to go. And now we're going to sim the game until the end. I think that is going to be a very good result for us. A 2-0 victory for our team against Dinamo Kiev. Away from home, we get ourselves a very, very good result to start off and kick off the uh, Champions League season. I love to see that. Young boys, the team of Mbimbi got smacked around 4-1 by Man City, though. Uh, pretty impressed that they still got a goal in. In the league at the moment, Munir has the most goals for Hertha. He has gotten four for his team. While we are still chasing it down, Isak with three. I think Mbimbi might have two, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Mbimbi's on three as well, actually. So both of our strikers in the main team are on three goals. 
And they're going to take over in this game against Leverkusen. That is a matchup that I really look forward to because it is one of the stronger sides in the Bundesliga. And we haven't had the chance to test ourselves against one of these teams yet. Uh, if you look back, you can see we had Werder Bremen, we had Stuttgart, we had Wolfsburg, which were convincing victories. But Leverkusen is going to be one true test of our strength right now. Uh, just in case they do still have a very, very good team like they used to. So let's see what team Leverkusen is going to line up with. As we step forward here, they're going to have Patrick Schick, Leon Bailey, Merkelans on the right-hand side, Lemar at center mid alongside Palacios, Calvin Phillips at CDM, Umtiti Akanji at center back. That is some defense right there with Fosu Menza and Sarachi completing it. And Hradeki at, uh, in the goalkeeper position. Sarachi, obviously, as you guys know, a former Leipzig player. So this is going to be an interesting matchup. Sarachi against who? It's going to be a right wing, Orellano against Sarachi. Let's get it on. Yes, it is actually, in fact, Thomas Lemar that plays at center mid for Leverkusen. I do wonder how that came to be, because as far as I know, that guy's a left midfielder. For whatever reason, I know every single interaction that I go into with Suchek, when he gets close enough to put in a tackle, I'm going to get the ball. I'm going to get the ball. And I think a lot of people undervalue CDMs like that. Someone that actually just defends extremely well. But Suchek... Funnily enough, has great offensive qualities as well. So it's such a such a great player. I, I really am surprised that I never used him before, but I'm extremely excited to have him here now as uh, Leverkusen is building up a decent attack and Konate gets the steal. Konate into Mambimbi and Isak. Here he goes now. These two boys know exactly what to do. The over-the-top through ball. Was he on? He wasn't. I tried. It was a good start to the game, though. Oh, there's a run. I see it. What a pass. What an incredible pass that is. Come on, Orellano. Show it. No way he hits the post. That's so unlucky. Orellano with the first big chance for our team. Completely wasted. By the way, I think a lot of people want to hear my opinion on this whole Manchester United and Liverpool thing. Um, since the game got postponed due to the fans protesting. Look, I'm all for fans going ahead and protesting. I 100% agree with most of the fans that want to get their owners out at the moment. I really, really do. I think a 50 plus one model would be very nice to implement in English football because I think a lot of English fans are kind of traditionalists and I think they would hold the values of the club very nicely and allow the club to grow just like they did in the past, right? Along with the fans and um, basically making sure that no, no shady business happens as Angelino puts it top right. What a finish from the left back, Sarachi. This is why you're gone, pal. This is why you're gone. Because Angelino came in from Man City and proved his worth to this team. 87 rated left back with an unbelievable shot into the top left corner. Great run. And the finish is a finish of a striker, man. Look at this angle. Look at the technique. He hits it so that it curls into the back of the net. Love that. Absolutely love that. But going back to the whole Manchester United Liverpool thing. I don't like protests where people get hurt, where people are doing criminal stuff. So breaking into the stadium and people getting hurt, getting um, having to go to the hospital and all that stuff due to protests. Like, I don't like that type of stuff. I, I want things like this to be peaceful. But at the end of the day, I just really hope that there is some sort of impact by all of this. Um, and I really hope that owners, especially American owners, realize that they can't just do anything they want with these clubs. They they have they have to plan with a lot of backlash and they have to be aware of it. And the, the fact that Ed Woodward had to step out and leave United is such a big impact already. I'm extremely surprised that it actually pulled through that way. But here we go. Here we go. Oh, I wanted to score there. What the hell are they doing? Wow, that's great passing to get through the defense. And uh, now they're going to potentially score. Are they? They're bringing it back. Hold, hold on, what the hell is happening here? This is the longest... Okay, nothing happened. Cool, okay, this attack is done. But yeah, the whole United protesting. I, I am I am okay with it being postponed because I had so much to do anyways on stream, so all good. <laughs> Mambimbi, Isak. Mambimbi, I see that run. Isak, come with me. Oh, what? Bro, I hate that skill moves don't work anymore, man. It's such a pain. To have to deal with the same type of attacks every time. I've seen some people like say, Hey Johnny, your gameplay is very one-dimensional at times. You do just run in behind and score goals and that type of stuff, you know? 
And bro, what am I supposed to do? I am playing on all the ultimate difficulty. I play on, on competitor mode. And every time I want to do a skill move and score a nice goal for you guys, the AI is like, ha, psych. They, they just don't care. They really don't care. No skill move works against these guys unless it's perfectly timed. Here goes Isak. Smack it. Isak. Goalkeeper doesn't even move. 55th minute. It's a beautiful strike. This time from a striker, not from a left back. That's what I want to see. Leverkusen, you're not doing too well, are you? That is a great pass from Suchek, I believe. Or was that Suchek? It was Suchek. He gets involved and gets himself his first assist. The Czech Republic beast is doing extremely well in this team. He, he might be the best player in this squad. I, I honestly think so. Down the left-hand side, Sobos Lai. I want to score a banging goal with Sobos Lai. I really, really do. The finesse of dreams. Sobos Lai. Whew. This guy is the best long shot in our team, and I want to see him score those. I really, really do. That was a great, great shot from him. Could have been... What? Oh, my God. So close. Could have been such an incredible goal. Okay, Angelino is not standing up. That's cool. He's shaking his head rather than standing up and playing. I don't know what the hell happened there. EA's cheating right now. And they might be through. Oh, Konate. What a steal. Very important for the denier objective. I do need my clean sheets. I really do. And here goes the run of Mambimbi. Mambimbi. Now looking for Isak in the middle. I'm going to whip it in. I'm going to see if Isak can win this header. He tries. He at least tries. Stop Leon Bailey. Stop him. Lads, thank you. 91st minute. And with that, this game should technically be done. Unless the referee lets us play out this attack right here. Oh, God. What a terrible pass. The game is over. Clean sheet secured for Denier. 2-0 victory. The first bigger squad in the Bundesliga that we come up with. And we are showcasing our strength immediately. I wonder... If Dortmund has been able to put in another great performance to keep up with us, we have been unbeaten so far in the Bundesliga. We're still waiting for one of these teams to put up a challenge against our squad. And you can just tell, I am feeling this squad, man. I love the defense. The defense is exceptional at the moment. Denier and Konate are doing a great job. And Suchek ahead of them just sweeps everything up. The guy is insane. After that matchup, we now have Hamburg coming up. Hamburg, not necessarily a team that we should be scared of. A team that used to be scary back in the day, but now isn't anymore. And we have Champions League football coming up right after it against Napoli. So Hamburg is going to be a matchup that we simulate. I want to see how our team does in this matchup. I love the fact that the team is growing nicely, though. Like, not in terms of rating, but in terms of how they play together. I can see... I can see how everyone is just glued together in the squad. It, it just works so well. And I, I really enjoy it, man. We have ourselves a nil-nil draw against the 18th in the league. Okay. That's a bit interesting. The thing is, Dortmund might have overtaken now. They might have actually taken first place. If we bottle it like that, they might have taken it. Napoli, our next opponent in the Champions League. Let me see Dortmund real quick. Dortmund is on 14. Oh, they had two draws. All right, we're still first. That's good. But Bayern Munich now coming up the league table. Okay. Bayern, ever since we looked at them, have gotten two more victories and one more draw. So they are getting closer. I got to be careful with Bayern. I don't know who the hell is in their team because they've sold so much. I really do wonder. Aussie men, Insigne, a bunch of incredible players coming up for Napoli. They are probably very high rated right now. I do wonder what kind of matchup this is going to be. This might be the toughest match of this season so far. I do fully expect Napoli to be a very, very strong squad. I'm going to take a look into their starting lineup again here for you guys. You can see it. Ozimen, Ocampos, Insigne, Zielinski, Fabian, Zakaria, Upamecano. Okay. Harry Maguire is the captain of the team. Carl Walker. Okay, this team is crazy. This team is actually crazy. Beautiful. Look at that. Suchek. Mambimbi. Isak. Isak has Soboslai on the right. Soboslai cut inside. Right foot. Soboslai again. Now has Angelino in support. Angelino with the crossover into Mambimbi. Can he beat Koulibaly in there? Uh, he definitely cannot. Koulibaly. Who was it again? I can't remember anymore. Well, already forgot. Upamecano. There you go. Orellano. Good pass. And here goes Mukiele. Not necessarily a great attacking player, but the cross is still coming in into Soboslai, who nearly volleys it. That would have been such a powerful shot. 
Sucks to not see it. Yes. Beautiful. Nice. Go on then. He suck. Nice. Oriano, left foot. Go oh no. I was about to say golasso, but no, it didn't come off. What a good strike that was though. Oriano cutting in on his left. Sobos like cutting in on his right. We do have a lot of finesse shot opportunities in the future, that's for sure. Go on then. Isak. Isak. Oh yes. This is the one. This is the one, Isak. This is all you. Alexander Isak. 34th. The one two between him and Bambimbi never fails to amaze me. They seem to be the best friends in this team. Oreano is kind of feeling like he's losing his best friend here, man. I, I can see it happening in front of my eyes. Oreano will have to be friends with Parades from now on. Isak and Mambimbi have a beautiful partnership going on right now that just keeps on working out. 1-0 up against Napoli in a tough match so far. They are definitely one of the better teams I've played. Oreano, Mambimbi, beautiful pass. Come on, Mambimbi. Come on, Mambimbi. Oh, maybe I should have continued running. I still had some space ahead of me. Why is Mambimbi at these corners? Why is he there? Oh, that's why he's there. <laughs> Mambimbi scores a header off a corner. There's no way. There's actually no way. How did they let him score this? He's like, what? Five foot eight? Oh, he was up against Insigne. <laughs> Bro, what is wrong with this game? EA, why are you putting Insigne at the near post, bro? And Vine Vindal, who is much taller and stronger, is just chilling at the post. While Insigne is defending it. And that guy's glitching through the benches. That's cool. Um, what just happened? How did he just score that header? And why is he so good at heading the ball? I want to know that. Is Mambimbi actually decent at heading the ball? Jumping 68. You have to be kidding. Why is he heading the ball at near post? Anyways, it worked, so I shouldn't complain. Napoli with some great passing here. That's a pen. Mokele, man. I thought he had it. I can't really blame him. I, I genuinely thought we had a very good chance of getting the ball there. But as you can tell, he just gets the opponent. And Ozyman now has the chance to equalize right as we get into... Gulashi. Gulashi, my man, saves it again for the squad. This guy is a much better goalkeeper than uh, Mateos. That is for sure. I'll tell you that much. Ah, uh, still not good enough, man. That's such bad defending. Ozyman actually still scores in the same attack. It's 2-1. Napoli back into the matchup. No clean sheet for me. Just badly defended. I don't know how he just glitched through me there, but that's too easy for Ozyman, guys. It's 2-1. This game is not over yet. Napoli is a decent side, and I'm, I am worried that they might come back even more. That's some good passing play right around our, uh, the edge of our box. And I just played a terrible pass into my opponent. Napoli is dominating this game right now and I'm not liking it at all. Ozyman, Denier, uh, Insigne. Oh my god, Insigne ruined me. Gulashi saved me. 79th, we got to make some changes. These players are struggling right now. Adams is going to come on. I'm going to bring on Pavard as a center back. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Pavard comes on. Uh, he does have a three-star weak foot, so it's fine. And then I think Kukju for Suchek. And then switch these two around. That's the way we're going to do it. Come on. Save it, guys. Save this 2-1 lead, please. And Napoli is impressive. Uh, another one. Another shot. Come on. Oh, God. Can you please... He's injured. He's actually injured. Great. Great. And someone attack this guy. Oh my lord, bro. We're just giving away so many chances after chances. Napoli should be winning this game. I can't believe I'm still ahead. That's a cross. That's Pavar. It's a straight back into Insignia. You love to see it. We're going to take out Insignia. And that is the last tackle of the game. Bro, this was such a tough matchup. Napoli nearly did it. They nearly did it, boys, but they couldn't, okay? That's what matters at the end of the day. We got the three points. First in a group. Napoli was up there with us. They had the same amount of points. And this was for the first in the group stages in our group. 
in the Champions League. That is exactly a performance that I want to see. I want to win games. I want to win games. But Napoli, as you can tell, more possession, more shots on target. 100% shot accuracy, 89% pass accuracy. They should have won this game, but we did. And that's that just feels great. I'll be on. Unlucky, pal. Next episode, guys, we're going to kick it off with a matchup against Bayern Munich. Leipzig has shown how good they can be, but now this is officially the biggest match coming up. The big test against Bayern. I am not allowed to lose because obviously, as you guys know, Nagelsmann has moved over there and I want to see my team succeed. Mambimbi up to the 85 rating. Orellano, 85 as well. Um, anyone else growing in the starting lineup? I think Mukiele went up to an 87 in this epi. Fangi Chan remained the same. Brobby as well. No one in the reserves team has grown, I believe. Actually, Tommy Yasu has gone up to an 80. Katabach has gone up to a 77. Carvajal to 74. So we are slowly seeing actual overall growth in the team as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. I'll catch you next time when it means that we have to step up against Nagelsmann and his new team. Let's prove him wrong that he picked the wrong team to succeed with. Peace. Hit the mic. Nice.